The workflow step call sub workflow gives you the capability within a process to initiate a separate process instance, either by starting a sub workflow and waiting for it to complete, or by starting a sub workflow and continuing on with the parent workflow. This demonstration will focus on the call sub workflow configuration setting, start sub workflow and continue running parent workflow. This capability is helpful in many scenarios and one such example could be inside an employee onboarding process that needs to ensure tasks like setting up login accounts, configuring a telephone, and purchasing computer hardware are performed. These tasks do not need to delay the rest of the onboarding process, so you might build an operations setup process that would be started as a sub workflow and allow the employee onboarding process to continue running. Doing this not only facilitates the principle of reuse in other processes, but also allows you to make changes to the operations process without affecting the onboarding process. Let's take a look at an example I've built to demonstrate this capability. I've built a workflow that demonstrates pieces of an employee onboarding process and tied it to a simple list in SharePoint. Within this process, I need to call an operations setup sub workflow which has been built as a separate workflow in a K2 project using Visual Studio. All the employee onboarding process is concerned about is making sure that the operation setup process gets started. I've already pre-configured much of this workflow, so all we need to focus on is the call sub workflow step and configure it to call the operation setup process. To do this, I want to drop the call sub workflow wizard onto my placeholder for this event. Then the first window that opens up will be the Choose Sub Workflow window. Here you can configure the sub workflow you want to initiate by selecting it from the drop down at the top of the window. This drop down will expose all of the workflows in your environment. I'll select the Operations Setup workflow from here. Next, I'm going to set the folio text to reference the name of the employee by grabbing the first and last name from the item reference in the context browser. Because I want the onboarding parent process to continue on and not wait for the operation setup process to complete, I'll change the configuration setting to Start Sub Workflow and Continue Running Parent Workflow in the section called Specify How the Sub Workflow Will Be Called. Moving on, you have two options for identity when you start a sub workflow. You can have that workflow use the originator account of the parent workflow, or you can have it run as the service account that runs the K2 server. If you run the sub workflow as the originator's account of the parent workflow, it will make it easier to communicate and notify this person within the context of the sub workflow. It will also put identity and historical logging and instance reporting for that workflow as it runs. If you have a sub workflow that requires permissions of the K2 service account, then use the setting Use Identity of K2 Server. Consider doing this if the sub workflow doesn't require any interaction with the originator of the parent workflow, or doesn't need to keep history that it ran as the originator's identity. Let's move on to the Send Data window. This screen is used to map data into the sub workflow when it is initiated by the parent workflow. All available data fields from the sub workflow will be displayed here and can be populated using any options with valid data types from the context browser on the right, or by hard coding values directly in the box. You can use smart objects, inline functions, and in our case for this demo, the item reference. I'll drop in the ID column using the item reference to my SharePoint list. Make sure you have a check in the box next to the field that you want to populate here as well. And one more thing to keep in mind here is the fact that I've selected to start this sub workflow and not wait for it to complete means I won't be able to receive data back from the sub workflow through data fields when it completes. In essence, data can only travel one way in this configuration. With that, I'll save and deploy this workflow and quickly move on to show how it works. To test this workflow out, I have it hooked up to an employee onboarding SharePoint list where the onboarding workflow will start when a new item is added to the list.
Let's kick one off to watch what it does. To keep this simple, I'm not going to capture everything you would need for an employee onboarding process. I'm just going to enter in first name and last name and then also a title. Also notice I added a hardware ordered column in my list. This column will be updated by the Operation Setup Child process when it completes the hardware ordering step within. I'll save this record and then move over to the view flow to watch these two processes as they run. As expected, the onboarding workflow is running and sitting in a holding pattern. The view flow for this process will show that it's waiting on the background check sub workflow to complete. At this point, for the sake of time, I'll pause the video here and we'll come back when the background check is about to complete. Okay, that should be just about enough time for the background check to complete. Now we'll see the onboarding process move on to subsequent steps. Notice that it initiates the operations setup as a child process and continues on without waiting for it to complete. Now I'd like to look at the view flow for this child process, so I'll drill into it by clicking here. For this demo, I've configured this process to briefly pause on the order hardware step to show you it is still running while at the same time the parent process moved on. The employee ID data field was also populated with the ID value passed in by the parent process from the data source. This data field is used to update the hardware ordered column back in the data source as well as add information to an email notification that fires off when this process completes. So to wrap it up, that's how you use the call sub workflow step with the configuration set to not wait for the child workflow to complete before moving on. We would like to thank you for watching this demo on how to use the call sub workflow wizard. We hope you have a better understanding of how and when you can use this workflow step within processes used by your organization.